How can we start the new center for teaching and learning? Here are some ideas that I would like to share with you. The first step we need to take to create a learning and teaching center is to define the center's vision and mission. It's easy to get sucked into brainstorming activities that can lead to setting up budgets and programming or infrastructure and staffing needs. To avoid long-term issues, however, a vision and a mission statement will be helpful because these will clearly define the center's main purpose and the goals we intend to achieve. There are many ways to get this done. It can be written solely by the center's future leader. It can be done collaboratively through committee work, Relevant stakeholders can set up internal surveys to gather information from the community to help defining it, or we can even take a sneak peek at what other universities are currently doing to gather intel. It's also crucial to communicate to the educators in the community we intend to serve what a learning and teaching center isn't going to do, since there are many misconceptions about the work developed by these centers, which sometimes tends to hinder healthy communication and taint collaborative endeavors. A learning and teaching center shouldn't push ready-made teaching practices for everyone to adopt. It should not focus on reprimanding educators, nor it will be responsible for rehabilitating them either. As an instructional designer, I teach educators to backwards design their courses, so it seemed almost natural to think the same way when it comes to materializing a center for learning and teaching. By collaborating with the Institutional Effectiveness Department, we can set up institutional outcomes, program quality outcomes, and learning outcomes for educators. Writing outcomes can be a daunting task indeed, but here are some examples of faculty outcomes that could kickstart an interesting discussion. Developing and nurturing relationships that promote and enhance teaching. Increasing pedagogical perception and understanding. Using technology-enhanced pedagogies consistent with best practices. Collecting and implementing feedback to enhance teaching practices. Integrating appropriate research about how learning materializes to improve teaching practices. Reinforcing diversity and inclusivity through your teaching practice. All outcomes should then be mapped and aligned accordingly. The next step takes us to the data collection through a myriad of tools to verify how impactful we are being and if we are keeping in line with our mission statement. It's important to note that centers differ in size and shape. A center can start small by merely focusing on professional development for educators, but as community support and engagement grows, it can become broader in scope by undertaking staff development, research, innovation, sharing experience, and marketing. If we are creative enough, it can even go as far as providing educational services for external stakeholders by becoming a storefront for online and on-site resources facilitated in combination with future private and public partnerships. If we intend to start small to test the waters, of course, creating a yearly plan with a focus on instructional design, innovative teaching and learning, and educators' professional development would be a good place to begin, providing one already has appropriate infrastructure and human resources, or plan to upscale soon. Due to the pandemic, most institutions have become accustomed to a certain level of pedagogical novelty when it comes to delivering materials in challenging and uncertain ways, as well as the changes needed to accomplish it so the new center might get a lot of suggestions coming their way. Nonetheless, it's important to not let everyone flood the center with new ideas and requests and stick to the intended direction. The mission statement can be a useful deterrent in such cases. Don't forget that it is more important to be responsive rather than reactive, hence the backwards design suggested previously. Community support is paramount for growth, however, so it is highly advisable to check what types of initiatives are currently taking place in your surroundings. If these align with the center's mission, it makes sense to reach out to the people involved and collaborate directly with them. Silos tend to happen in big institutions and competing factions are unfortunately a reality. Thus, 
finding a way to collectively create a unified strategic programming approach about center relevant topics will help solidify stakeholders relations increase communication and kickstart the center's service providing initiatives in a solid way i'm sure there are some mavericks in your institution with great ideas who are already making great disruptive changes in their own departments try to bring them on board by creating a centered powered fellows program give them an official title and reward them accordingly rewards are a tricky affair but this could go from monetary rewards to course releases or even making that type of work count towards their promotion it's important to capitalize on the human resources currently available and make use of professionals who are already championing the educators development cause once the center has been established it's important to adopt a strong leadership style to maintain it and help it grow some models of educational leadership such as transformational or instructional have been trending as of late but it's essential to analyze one's environment and its idiosyncrasies to act accordingly however one of the main qualities a center's leadership should demonstrate to tackle 21st century problems is creativity that should be the base of any leadership effort in the center of tomorrow creative leaders should be seen as ethical servants and facilitators committed to a learner-centered model fueled by utagogical approaches they need to collaborate holistically with an educational ecosystem which nowadays tends to stretch beyond the school's premises and into the community by communicating with it feeding from it and feeding it it's paramount to be moral disruptive consumer driven socially aware and visionary to help educators materialize a positive future for students and prepare them for jobs that haven't been invented yet this is only possible if the center's leadership allows educators to nurture creative skills and create safe spaces for experimentation and divergent thinking so that's a wrap i hope you found this insightful thank you very much and please get in touch <laughs>